She has conceived and built several unique devices that enable human beings to see parts of the ocean in new ways and some parts of the ocean never before seen by human eyes. Most recently, Dr. Witter created a remotely operated deep sea camera system known as the Eye in the Sea, which when deployed on the sea floor, automatically detects and measures the bioluminescence of nearby organisms. Eye in the Sea has produced footage of rare sharks, jellyfish, and discovered a new species of large squid, which apparently is over six feet in length, all in their natural habitats on the sea floor. In 2005, Dr. Witter resigned from her 16-year post at the Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institution to co-found the Ocean Research and Conservation Association, ORCA, a nonprofit organization dedicated to the protection and restoration of marine ecosystems and the species they sustain through development of innovative technologies and science-based conservation action. I'm going to be talking today about exploring and protecting planet ocean. And I'm going to be talking also about my favorite thing to talk about, which is the animals in the ocean make light, um, both from the exploring side and a couple of ways that we're actually using some of those animals on the protecting side. And because it's Earth Week, um, I'm going to be emphasizing a little more the protecting than the exploring this time around. Now, I'm sure you all know we live on an ocean planet. 71% of the surface of our Earth is covered by water. That's just surface area. If you think in terms of the living space on our planet, what's known as our biosphere, our ocean represents more than 99% of that living space. And we live on just a few little small islands that we call continents, surrounded by this vast watery world that we know surprisingly little about. Now, one reason that we know so little about the ocean is because of its inhospitableness to human exploration. Usually, when people show you pictures of the ocean, they look like this but that's only because it's on days like this that we take our cameras out. Because all too often the ocean looks like this, which is really problematic if you're somebody like my poor husband who gets seasick if there's a heavy dew on the lawn. <laughs> because a lot of what we do in marine biology in order to study the life in the ocean is we go out on little vessels like this and get tossed around in high seas while we drag nets behind those ships in order to be able to bring the animals up into our world where we're comfortable but unfortunately, they're not. Now, a lot of the animals that we bring up this way come up dead, and it's not so much the pressure change that kills them. It does in some cases, but a lot of these animals don't have air-filled spaces in their bodies. It's the temperature change, because in the surface waters, they're basically cooked alive. It's very cold in the deep ocean. You bring them up in a warm surface layer, and they're cooked. So if you really want to see the life in the ocean, it's obviously far better if you go to it then it comes to you. But what happens is you take a paradise like this and turn it into a moonscape like this. For one haul of shrimp, it is completely unsustainable. And there are things on the bottom of the ocean that I have seen, just magnificent gardens. Uh, there are giant golden corals, six feet tall, that are, have been found to be more than 3,000 years old. So think of it, something that was alive before Christ is being wiped out for one haul of shrimp. And by the way, golden coral glows, it's bioluminescent. This little planet that we live on, it's only 8,000 miles in diameter. It's a speck of dust in the universe. And if you think about it, we really are a spaceship hurtling through space. Now imagine that you were going to be on a space journey to go to Alpha Centauri. It would take many, many, many generations to get there. The first thing you'd want to know is about your life support systems. You'd want to know if they could sustain you on your journey. And you'd want to do everything possible to protect them. Imagine three generations out, you find out somebody's been poisoning your life support systems. What would you do? We are on a spaceship, and our life support systems are being poisoned. The only hope is for an informed populace to act in order to protect those life support systems for generations to come. And I hope some of those people are in this audience tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs>